In this video, we're going to explain how model risk correlates probability distributions together using a statistical correlation method called copulate. So first of all, here is an example model where the three costs, one, two, three, are defined by distributions. Here, for example, minimum, most likely maximum, are 20, 30, and 50. And they're being modeled using a PERT distribution. You can see here that the current sample is at the 54th percentile of that probability distribution, meaning that here's a 54th percentile, and if you drop down from a cumulative curve, that generates the value that you see on screen, 31.9. The way that probability distributions are randomly sampled is to pick a value with uniform probability between 0 and 1, from this vertical axis, read through off the curated distribution and find out what the value is on the horizontal axis. So these three of Wilkie distributions are uncorrelated. So here you see that's a 54 percentile. This is at its 6.5 percentile. This one is 43 percentile. If I hit the F9 key, you'll see there's no relationship between them. 83, 69, and 18, they're all independent. Each is being sampled from somewhere between 0 and 1 with equal probability. Now, if we move on to a Car Aiken model, what I want to do is I want to correlate the same three distributions, but we're going to call them cost 4, 5, and 6 here, the same value. But I want them so that they're going to be sampled in a way where if one is high, one distribution's value is high, the other distribution values are also high. To do that, I use a click with control button down to highlight the three distributions. Right mouse click, model risk correlate, and this pulls up an interface. Here we're going to use the multivariate normal distribution. If you're used to rank order correlation, this is exactly similar. And you can see here the matrix. So variable 1, the cost 4, is correlated with variable 2, cost 5, with 90% correlation. Then variable 1 is correlated with variable 3, cost number 6, with 80% correlation, and 70% between variable 2 and variable 3, which are cost 5 and 6. So this is a random sample showing how the relationship between these two distributions are being correlated. I need to insert the copula into my model. To do that, I choose a location. I click here. It tells me to select a one by three or three by one cell because there are three components to that copula because there are three random variables being correlated. Click OK. And then insert to worksheet. Now there are three values to this copula between zero and one, but you can see there either going to be high at the same time, or they're going to be low or somewhere in the middle. So 20%, 22%, 37%, 5%, 4%, 14%, 14%, And here we see that they're correlated together. So if I was to click on the F2 button, you can see that there's a probability distribution maimed with minimum most likely and maximum, and here we've used the fourth parameter, which we call the U parameter, connected to that copula. If I run these two models together, the uncorrelated and correlated, you will see the difference in the sums. Notice that these values here are exactly the same values as the one to be repeated here. So we start a simulation. And when the simulation is complete, the model risk results viewer opens. Here we see the total correlated and total uncorrelated costs plotted together. And you can see that the uncorrelated costs have a narrower probability distribution than the correlated costs. If I look at the uncorrelated costs between, say, cost one and two, you'll see a very uniform scatter plot. If I look at the correlated costs, 
I see the scatter plot there is the same as that Gaussian or normal copula. In the next sheet, we have the same model, but we're using a different kind of copula. It's called a Clayton. By clicking on the view function icon in model risk, it pulls up that correlation structure. But this is useful if we want to say that, for example, here, where these two costs are at their very lowest, they are very extremely well correlated, but they're more diffusely correlated when they're high. Looking back into the results viewer, we see the effect of the copular correlation between cost seven and eight in that Clayton sheet. And you can see that they're being highly correlated in the low values and less so in the high values. And we can switch this from either shilling the, the centiles, which is exactly showing the copula structure or the values. In the next example, we are looking at a set of data and we're going to fit uh, a copula structure to the data and a probability distribution to each of the variables in that data set. There is a theorem known as Sklar's theorem in probability theory that says if you use maximum likelihood methods for estimating the copula and the distributions, they can be done separately. So here are the data for diastolic and systolic pressures associated with the heart. You can see the relationship here being shown on the scatter plot. Systolic is the pressure when it's pumping, diastolic is when heart is filling, and so the systolic pressure should always be higher than the filling pressure. And that red line shows where the two values would be equal. So you see all of the values are being, that are in our data set, are higher than that uh, x equals y line. And you can see there's a correlation using the R squared in Excel of 0.23. So somewhere around about a 0.5 correlation coefficient. So square root two fit a copula to the data. What I have to do is grab the data, go to the fit icon in model risk, Select bivariate copula fit because there are just two variables. So I have more options with a bivariate copula than I do with a multivariate copula. Select which of these copula structures I would like to compare against. So I select all of them to the right. Okay. And to make this easier to see, I'll increase the number of samples to 5,000. So 5,000 are the random samples of the copula. And in the red dots, you will see the actual data set. And you can see that the normal copula is the one that has come up as the high, at the best fitting. Once I've selected which of these copulates I want to use, so I will use the normal copula. I select where I want to put the copula location, insert to worksheet. And you'll see there's a bivariate copula has been placed into these cells. If I hit the F9 key, you will see the random value is changing. Here you see I've already fit a log normal distribution to the data. And so I'm going to connect it to the copula. Like that. And take, okay. Copy that across. And now I have a log normal figure distribution to my data for each of the individual variables. Plus, I have the correlation between them fitted using a by their normal distribution, normal copula. Finally, to show the flexibility of copulas, we have another example here. So three variables, x, y, and z, and we're going to assign minima and maxima values to them. And we're using here what is called the data copula. To let you understand the, what that pattern of relationships looks like, we can highlight the data. We can go into the function, the tool, data viewer, which lets us explore the information. Data, it's data, it's multivariate. We can assign some labels so we can better see, visualize what they look like. Go, okay. 
here you see that the data for individual variables will not fit any of the typical distributions that one would find in software. Neither do the correlation relationships that look anything like a standard form of copula, like a Clayton or a Frank or a Gumbel or a normal. So we don't want to use any of those standard correlation structures. Instead, we're going to use the data copula. We take a copula as already written here. For us, data copula covers three variables. And if I click on the view function, you can see that the data copula which is being simulated alongside the available data. Let's again change the number of points to 5,000. You can see that it is exactly reproducing the patterns or information we had between each variable. Using that in combination with a simple OGIVE, and OGIVE is a way of simply ranking the data and then using those data information in combination with the minimum maximum to be able to exactly describe the, the shape of that individual distribution. So for example, I click on both archive here, you can see it's a very curvy, unusual shaped cumulative distribution. So by using the those Hokai function and the data copula, we have the ability to replicate any data pattern with any distributional form that we might have um, expressed by our data.